Um, as part of our mission, uh, David and I have made up a pamphlet, along with Greg's help, about 10 principles that you taught us a lot about as we were growing up. And each of us is, uh, each of us, your children, are assigned to do two of those principles. And mine are number seven and eight, and number seven is perseverance wins. So I'm going to talk about that one first. Um, you have said before, it is never so good or never so bad that the existing situation cannot be improved with patience, determination, love, and hard work. Your mother always said, perseverance wins, and she was right. Your father taught that we should not only endure to the end, but strive to excel through the journey. You lived this principle when living on the farm in Garland, Utah, and you were doing farm chores. You wrote, I had to work very hard as a young man in the sugar beet fields. We had a very small, unproductive farm, and the soil had a lot of rocks. In the spring on the farm, I thinned the sugar beets, and later in the summer, I weeded them. The job was a real taskmaster, keeping my nose close to the hoe and stirring up dust in my face. While doing your farm work, you noticed airplanes flying overhead, and you decided you would be a pilot one day. At that time, you could not be a pilot unless you went to college, and you knew you could not afford to do that. However, soon a government scholarship became available due to the need for pilots for war. So you worked hard to, to take the test and qualify for that scholarship. Because of your perseverance and determination, you won the scholarship, thus opening the door to be able to fulfill a lifelong mission of service in a way that you loved. You earned your private pilot license in 1941 at Brigham City, right before Pearl Harbor. When we were in school, you used to say, raise your hand if you know the answer, do your best. You showed us that any challenge could be met head on. You could balance the hard work and perseverance with fun too, and look for the beauty around you. You lived the wonderful combination of hard work and enjoyment of life. The next principle, principle number eight, is that love and other principles are best learned through family, friends, and church. You showed us throughout your life that love, service, compassion, reaching out to others and serving at church teach us guiding principles and bring us lasting happiness. These principles are best learned in families with friends and being involved at church. You make friends wherever you go. I remember a time when you and mom came to visit us when we were living in Indonesia and we took a trip to Sumatra. We passed a busy market in a remote area and you wanted to look at it. Soon a crowd gathered around you and some of the men pointed to your arms and laughed and laughed. They were comparing their dark brown arms to your white arm. Then you lifted up your pant leg to show them even a more brilliant skin and several of them came and compared theirs to yours. They were all holding their sides in laughter and so were you. You had made a handful of new friends. You learned compassion when you lost your older brother, Sherm, when you were just 14 years old. You said, because of my parents and my anguish at his loss, I developed a deep well of compassion for others suffering. I remember when you were commander at Tempelhof, you had the task of letting family members know if something happened in their family and they weren't aware of it. One evening, you came home after visiting the family who had lost their husband and father and he had been killed in a car accident. This is the hardest part of my job, you said. In 1953, you and mom needed to sell our home in Ohio to be transferred to Utah. The home wouldn't sell. So getting desperate, you and mom arranged for an open house one Saturday morning, soon before you needed to be transferred. However, the night before the open house, a neighbor came to ask if you could help him get his corn planted in the field before the rain would come the next day. You knew that you had the big open house and you had to find a buyer for the house. However, even though very inconvenient, you decided to help your neighbor plant his corn 
and soon managed the open house and mom managed the open house along with the two young children. When the planting was completed late Saturday night, the farmer asked about our house for sale. He said he would buy it and would get the money from the bank on Monday. That was a big miracle. You learned, again, the principle of service before self and have learned this many times over. This was just one of those times. Later on, as a bishop and stake president in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you used your exceptional organizational skills and even more your special gifts of letting each member know they were cared for and valued. Once, when a new family moved into our congregation, you loaded up produce from your garden to bring to them. Later, they called you the vegetable bomber instead of the candy bomber because of all the wonderful things you brought to them. You planned fun activities for the young people in the congregation that got them involved in nature, scouting, and camping. Your meeting with leaders in your congregation were, meetings were efficient and faith-promoting. Each person knew that they were valued, and each one knew that their role in building God's kingdom. You really showed us that family, friends, and church are important to a good life, and that we learn and practice the important principles of love, compassion, service, gratitude, and sacrifice in these settings. We learned by watching you that it is the little things we do in these settings that put us on the path of life. I love you, Dad. Thank you for showing me a good way to live. Love you, Denise.